make this assembly, to make this do better, and to handle the attack that is being placed on our union in general. So before we start it, For ten. President of Petrochem, Mr. Khaled Hasnali, Vice President, members of management, employees, special invited guests, members of state and regulatory agencies, welcome to our evacuation drill exercise. We will start this program this morning with a safety briefing, and this will be done by the head HSE corporate, Mr. Jagannath Siram Narayan. Help this drill. Our washrooms are to the back of you, the exit on your right hand side or left, with the gents being on your right, the second door on your right, the ladies' washroom on I my would left. I would like to invite to the podium Petrochin's esteemed president, Mr. Khaled Hassanali, who will deliver the opening remarks, Mr. Hassanali. Thank you very much, Mr. Sham Dial, our manager, HSE. Minister of Energy and Energy Affairs, Senator the Honorable Mr. Kevin Ramnarain, members of the board and management of Petrotrin, members of the regulatory and state agencies here present today, members of the bargaining units, the Oilfield Workers Trade Union, the National Petroleum Staff Association, as well as the Estate Police Association, other distinguished guests, members of the media, fellow employees. It is indeed, of course, a pleasure to be here today and to welcome you to the largest evacuation drill exercise that has been conducted at the Point of Pierre refinery. 
I hope our chief medical officer, Dr. Jackson, is okay. The background to this, ladies and gentlemen, is that while we have conducted lower level drills in the past for different areas of the refinery based on our site specific emergency response plans, this is the first time in the history of Petrotrin that we have a drill of this magnitude now being tested. Today's drill involves the evacuation of more than 1,300 personnel and we also have the support from over 300 emergency responders and observers. This is part of our emergency response plan. So Petrotrin recognizes the potential threat of a major fire, and this is going to be the subject of the drill this morning, occurring in the refinery, and has taken the proactive step to develop a fire emergency response plan, especially for the refinery center in Point Pier. The fire emergency response plan is aimed at preparing us in the event that such an emergency, and we can move swiftly and decisively to ensure the safety and well-being of our employees, contractors, visitors within the refinery, and of other persons in our fence line communities, especially the Marabella district near to us. Our emergency response plan is also expected to prevent or mitigate any damage to our operations. In November 2014, the plan was updated according to, according to internationally accepted standards using the incident command system as our standard. And that is viewed as probably the best management system to integrate our response mechanisms with those of the state agencies. The updated plan that we are going to be testing this morning includes four sub-plans. One for medical department, the traffic management, crisis communications, and telecommunications. All these have been reviewed with the Trinidad Tobago Fire Service, the Trinidad Tobago Police Service, and, of course, the San Fernando City Corporation. And why are we having this drill this morning? We at Petrotrin have what we believe is a comprehensive document plan, and maybe in theory. And the purpose of the evacuation drill today is mainly to test and evaluate how effective we are in putting this into practice. We'll be testing our fire emergency response plan for the Point Pier refinery to establish and familiarize employees and contractor personnel within the refinery with the evacuation procedures and the location of muster points and evacuation routes in the event of such an emergency. We will also be testing the roles of the incident management team comprising Petrotrin and the supporting government agencies, including, of course, as I mentioned, the fire and police service. And our incident commander today is Mr. John Varden, who is our Vice President Refining. It is critical that the government agencies and also the members of the media are involved in these exercises. Only by so doing, we will have all parties be able to explore and understand the reason and the, the fully their roles and responsibilities as part of the Unified Command System. This drill also serves to develop and strengthen the personal, personal relationships that are so important in times of emergency. And ladies and gentlemen, what are we protecting right now in the refinery? We, we have to protect a refinery in which all of the units that are there are now in operation, full operation. In January of this year too, the cat cracker, is restarted after being shut down for some 11 months and is operating between 25 and 30,000 barrels a day. We are also protecting a mechanical availability that has improved now and is averaging greater than 90% over the last three months. We are also careful about the refinery utilization which has increased from 38% in previous times to 70% over the last two months. And we're also protecting a refinery that is now processing crude at the rate of about 140,000 barrels a day, up from about 112,000 barrels per day in previous years. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us continue, please, to work together to build the HSE culture of Petrotrin, where we put safety, our health, 
as well as the environment as a core value and find the right balance among people, industry, and also again the environment. I wish everyone a successful drill and please participate fully as well as we would be very grateful for the feedback that occurs at the end of the actual exercise. Thank you very much again. Goes as follows. In the east area of the refinery, Horton spheres D33 and D34 are used as intermediate LPG storage for butane and butylene. At 8.30 a.m. today, the contents of D33 were being transferred to the bond for sales via the butane transfer pump P2331. At 8.45, an earthquake occurred measuring 5.3 on a Richter magnitude scale. Simultaneously, an alarm sounded on the C3-C4 alkylation DCS screens in the Site 1 DCS control building. The alarm was from a hydrocarbon detector located on the butane transfer pumps at D33, D34. At the time the alarm was activated, the level in D33 was 65%, which corresponded to a volume of 3,600 barrels of butane butylene material. Operations personnel investigated and saw a cloud of LPG material in the vicinity of the butane transfer pumps. It was observed that the six inch discharge piping to the butane transfer pump P2331 had ruptured, resulting in the, release, in the release of butane butylene to the environment. Operations personnel were unable to shut down or isolate P2331 due to the vapor cloud. The pumping of butane butylene from both the C3-C4 alkylation and FCCU GCX units were immediately stopped and the units were shut down. Within five minutes, close to 500 barrels or 650,000 cubic feet of butane butylene material had already leaked from the ruptured discharge line and due to the prevailing northeast trade winds, the majority of the leaked butane butylene had spread in a vapor cloud across the Thames and Kwai rivers towards number two vest breaker or VBU heater. At this point, the hydrocarbon cloud ignited. The unconfirmed vapor cloud explosion resulted in damaged pipe racks adjacent to the East Area West Road and along Bonaventure Road, resulting in more hydrocarbon material being released and also damage to the structure of number 10 cooling water tower. The fire grows rapidly and threatens other nearby units. The initial hydrocarbon cloud has completely burned out and no more hydrocarbon vapors are visible. But oil in the Thames has ignited, resulting in fires at number four API separator and number four API guard basin east of the hydrogen plant. Additionally, the continued leak of butane butylene material at the discharge piping of P2331 results in a 60 foot long horizontal jet fire, sending flames in an easterly direction across the East Area West Road, which impinges on nearby pipe rack supports and associated piping. That is the scenario that we are working with this morning. And our team has been assembled, Incident Command team has been assembled as you have seen here. And as I said, this is a simulation. So we have our unified command team and, and this table headed by Mr. John Barden. We have our operations section team, finance section team, logistics section team, and the planning section team. We also have on the other table our information officer, liaison officer, and safety officer assembled. So this part is simulated. The actual uh, response in the refinery will be real time in terms of the evacuation where we are looking to evacuate, as Mr. Hassan Ali mentioned, over 1,300 employees. The exercise will simulate a level three incident, and the trust of this exercise is to improve, is to impress, not to improve. Sorry, is to improve, not to impress. 
The exercise will involve the mobilization of equipment and personnel on site, and we have a number of different agencies. We have a unified command system here, and will focus on roles and actions of individuals, interactions between various state and government agencies with Petrotrin, and the development of information and response strategies. The time allowed for the exercise, including briefing, actual exercise, and debriefing, will be three hours. The exercise will be terminated when the exercise coordinator, who is Mrs. Francilla, uh, Francesca Lalaling, a senior HSC specialist for emergency response, in, co in conjunction with Mr. Kevin Singh, our HSC specialist, with the steering group, determines how the exercise objectives have been achieved. Evaluating the exercise successfully is as important as conducting it successfully. So we'll do an evaluation after. Now the coordinator and members of the steering group will not participate as players in this exercise. So those are the ground rules. So it is almost 9 a.m. And just to give you a simple explanation on what is a unified command. Within Petrotrain, all our plans are developed using, as Mr. Tasnali mentioned, the incident command system for incidents requiring a multi-agency response for level three or tier three incidents in terms of oil spills. And the unified system command approach is used not only in our internal ERPs, but also our community ERPs. The fire emergency response plan for the refinery, which has been tested today, uses a level three scenario, as I just described. And we'll be activating our incident management team using the in incident command approach, unified command. So we have the San Fernando City Corporation, the um, Inspector Knox from the Trent Tobago Police Service. We are waiting the arrival of the fire service senior personnel. And we have Mr. John Baden, who is our incident commander from Petrotrim. Now, the Unified Command is beneficial based on the large-scale incidents and allows all the responding agents to jointly provide management for the incident based on the objective set. And at this point, I will now hand you over to the exercise coordinator, Mrs. Francesca Lalali. Thank you. Okay, thank you. What has happened um, after this scenario, arising out of this scenario, the shift team leader for the plant has called on the Pagan operator to report the incident. The Pagan operator has contacted the fire department. The fire department within a minute, because um, the fire tenders are located within the refinery, has made an assessment and determined that it is a level three incident. The fire department on making this assessment has called back the Pagan operator to sound the general fire alarm in all areas as well as a voice over to indicate that the refinery personnel are to immediately evacuate to their muster points. Simultaneously, an emergency group page is sent out to all the key responders, as well as external responders, the Trent Tobago Police Service, Fire Service, City Corporation, and additional support, which is coming from TMAS, Red Cross, and Air Guard. So I now like to hand you over to the incident commander for Petrotrin, the vice president refining. And we can begin. Okay, so uh, we've now assembled. And um, the first thing, could I have a status from the operations group, please? Mike, Mike Charles. The fire department has responded to a call of a gas release in the east area. There has also been feedback that there has been an explosion, an unconfined vapor cloud explosion, and as a consequence, they have requested that the general alarm be sounded. Okay, have we sounded the alarm? Sound the alarm. Okay, so the alarm has been sounded. Personnel are now evacuating. We are waiting for information from the ground as to what is happening. So who do we have close to the incident? Mike? Fire department personnel are arriving on the incident. We have, they have dispatched two trucks along the, the main road to converge from the east area onto the incident. Another truck is entering the reef 
the North area of Erie Refinery via Gate 5, which would take them onto the 2HTU area where they're going to begin firefighting operations. Okay, on, on the record, can we make sure we know that we're recording what we have in terms of we have an uncontrolled vapor cloud uh, ignition and we have a gas release. And can we have those in bold so we know what we're dealing with as we go forward? I have received information that our first strike number one tender is on the scene and they have commenced firefighting operations. Okay, who, who is coordinating the plant operations? The refinery units. Somebody? We need to make decisions about shutting down units. What are we doing? Who's in, who's in control of that? Refinery operations personnel have not as yet communicated with us, however, we expect that they should begin shutting down the units as they see necessary. Well, we need to know which units have been shut down and which ones are remaining in operation and why they're in operation. So we need, a, we need an inventory of what's been shut down. If we've, got, if we've got a vapor release, we must ensure that we've removed all sources of ignition downwind. Information that we received that we have uh, the people are evacuating or the employees are evacuating the various areas in the refinery after the alarm was sounded. Evacuation or just evacuation from those areas? Uh, we have a full evacuation. Okay, so we're into a full evacuation mode, so we need to be clear about that. Are we deploying people to the muster points? At this point in time, people are being deployed to the muster points. HSC has sent out its personnel to start monitoring, and we are tracking the wind to be able to determine that where is the best muster points for them to go to. I will give an update shortly. Okay, can we have a confirmation when each of the muster points has been manned? Can we make sure we get that on the event log? At, at this time, also security personnel at the different gates to the refinery have been pushed out to access to conduct access control measures at the various points. Persons from the west area have been told to evacuate to the southern main road where they are conducting traffic. Good, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Petrotrin Point of Pierre Refinery. We are right now in the staff club. And of course, as you can see behind me is the um, refinery itself. Today we are here to simulate an evacuation drill that involves some 1,300 workers and contractors of Petrotrin. This is an exercise that is very important from the point of view of rehearsing what we will do in the event of a major incident in the refinery. From the briefing that we got this morning from the HSC people at Petrotrin, they are simulating a scenario where there is an earthquake taking place in the refinery and as a consequence of that earthquake there would be explosions and so on involving the LPG containment um, and storage area. Uh, so therefore from a safety point of view it's very important that we uh, conduct such drills so that employees know exactly what to do in the event of accidents and emergencies. Um, as you know the refinery operates <coughs> very high pressures, very high temperatures, um, and therefore it's a high-risk environment, and it's an environment where the workers, if they don't, if they don't uh, properly understand what has to be done in the event of an emergency, they could bring harm onto themselves and so on. And of course, our, our objective is that at all points in time, the workers at Petrotrin should be, should be safe and secure. So that's my introduction there. Yeah. What is that? 1,300 persons are involved and um, we also have a lot of regulatory agencies here this morning. The OSH agency is here this morning, the Ministry of Energy, 
as um, is also here this morning. So it's because if there is a emergency at Petrotrain, it will require a lot of stakeholders to collaborate to treat with that emergency. The objective of the exercise is to simulate what the response would be of the workers in Petrotrin in the event of a major emergency in the refinery. And remember, the refinery is surrounded by residential areas, by the Marabella area, by the Greater Point of Pier area, and so on. So it also will give us an appreciation of how um, you know, evacuation will take place with respect to persons living in the periphery of the refinery. The, yeah, yeah, the communities would also be involved in the exercise this morning. All right. Anything else, anything else, anybody? Do you think that the other authorities who are responsible for such disasters, do you think if something major like this happens, do you think they will be ready? What percent would they be ready for it? Well, I mean, let's look at what has happened in the last, last four years. The last four years, we've had, we've had a number of incidents and accidents and so on. Um, in an industry like this, with the size of the industry that we have, it is you always are going to have the risk of potential accidents and incidents. And what you want to do is to minimize the probability of that happening and be prepared for it in the event it happens. Let's go back to some of the things that have happened. You know, we've had when the when the government came into power. In 2010, you will recall there was a lot of rain. As the Prime Minister took the oath, you remember she had to go straight into the flood, the flood, the flood affected areas and so on. That actually caused the Harmony Hall substation here, not too far from here, to be knocked out because the flood waters went into the Harmony Hall station and as a consequence the refinery was down uh, because the refinery gets electricity from there. We've also had um, other incidents, we've had a blackout in 2013, in the island-wide blackout. We've had um, the oil spills, the one in La Brea and the one here in Marabella. We've had the cross-island pipeline incident last year, November, with NGC, where we had to basically ration electricity to the industrial sector and just so that we would not impact on the residential and commercial customers of TNTech and so on. So <clears throat> we've had some challenges in terms of accidents and in terms of incidents and so on. Um, but I'm confident that the state enterprises in particular, they have put in place new systems and this is part of this is part of that. I also want to say that the Ministry of Energy is on the brink of putting in place regulations. We are about to sign two wholesale marketing licenses, one with Unipet, one with NP, that will greater regulate NP and Unipet. We are also planning to sign in the next couple of months retail marketing licenses with every single gas station in this country that will bring in health and safety standards into the operations of gas stations and make it uniform across the country. And we are about to, we are about to lay in Parliament. We expect to lay in Parliament before the end of the life of this Parliament in the next three weeks, new regulations for the first time, regulations to regulate the quarry sector. So the Ministry of Energy has a couple rules. One of the roles the ministry plays is policy formulation. And the second role the ministry plays is business development. We attract investment through bid rounds and so on. And the third role, which I think is one of the more important aspects of the ministry, is regulation. So we are, we are bringing to parliament, as I said, the minerals regulations shortly. And the regulations for diesel storage are also right now on our desk in the ministry. As you know, diesel storage has been an issue. People tend to um, store diesel any, anyhow. Some people are very responsible with how they store diesel. Um, we have had incidents where people are storing diesel on the edge of the sea. I mean, and that of course has the potential for leakage into the sea or leakage into water courses and so on. So we are working on new regulations for diesel storage. Um, and the ministry, is, the ministry is about the business of regulation in a very serious way. Well, if you don't, if, can I, can I call Mr. Dial into the picture? Uh, 
Sham. We could ask that he's a, he's a better person to, to give details of of that. So, so you, you're going to be actively involved in the... But I'm going to move... I'm, I'm hoping you all... I think you all are invited to stick around. Um, they had, he had a question I wanted to... Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, I'm just asked how uh, much information do you provide to the residents within the area and the outskirts of the refinery in case of disaster happening? How often are they notified? Well, we revise, we update the emergency response plan annually and we hold meetings with the community on an annual basis. So what we have is actually coordinators, show street captains, and we also work with the, um, the councillor for the area in Marabella. What we do is that, um, like in this drill, we did not include the community in this drill because of the objectives was mainly um, to look at the evacuation of employees. Our intention is that next year we will conduct a drill again for evacuation of the Marabella community. So every couple of years, every two years, we intend to, to do a, a full drill um, of the Marabella community. And we also update our plans in terms of residents um, on an annual basis. So we go house to house and do that survey. But the drill today will have an impact on the traffic and the Marabella yes, community. And, and that has been communicated to and all the businesses as yeah. well as the so community. The drill, yes. Yeah, and they think the police are out there to manage yes. the traffic and so on. So we went house to house and notified personnel as well, and as well as with the councillor. Mm -hmm. So the residents have been informed about yes. the activity taking yes. place here and today? they have been told that they would not be required to evacuate. So we actually gave them flyers, house to house, that they would not be required to evacuate. That was done with our corporate communications department. All right. So thank, thank you. you very much.
and it's so And for the members of the media who are here, um, I want you to take a very good look around at the staff of Petro Train. These are the people who keep the refinery operating so that the country can have cooking gas, gasoline, diesel and so on. And they do so and they are exposed to risk in the refinery, high temperatures, high pressures and we must always have safety systems in place to ensure that they are taken care of and that they are safe. And this exercise this morning is part of that system. So I want to thank um, Mr. Hassan Ali and the HSC team and all the workers here this morning who are participating in this exercise. Thank you very much. <laughs> So your bees are on track, so just on here. So I don't know what that says about you. You can take it off? Yeah, I'll take it off. Take it off? Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right, yeah. You should be all right. Oh, I just, I just you can take off a minute. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Get your body out of